in a class and they'll be joining us um, here in a minute. I'm hearing her in the other room. But um, um, hi everyone. Thanks for coming to the first lecture of the uh, of the spring uh, 2021, I believe it is. Um, I've kind of lost all, all track of time and space over the last year, but I'm pretty sure it's still January 21. And um, it's really good to see you all here uh, for this lecture. We're going to have a busy lecture series. And as always in the spring, a lot of events. We have thesis reviews, uh, midterms next week. Of course, we'll have thesis finals and we'll have various midterms and final reviews for all the studios, of course, online. And uh, <clears throat> Giancarlo joins us today, but let me tell you about the rest of the lecture series. Uh, in another um, few weeks, Kate Wagner um, joins us. Kate is, um, I think she's now based in Chicago, but I have to check that. She's what one would call an architecture and cultural critic, and she's the creator of the website McMansion Hell. And if you haven't seen it, it's pretty funny. Uh, in March, uh, Carlos Molnar and Gerald McCants join us um, from their two respective firms to talk a little bit about their work, but also to talk about the idea of collaboration in architecture. They were classmates. They've known one another a long time. They've shared office space and they've traded back and forth with projects and stuff. So it's a really kind of neat relationship. Alex and Mayan is here in the middle of March. Alex is uh, the co-founder and a principal with Ann Mayan Winton Architects in Boston. Uh, a lot of great work from there. Those of you that uh, were a member of the studio that I co-taught with Martin Gunderson uh, the fall before last will recall we visited uh, their office and he gave us a, a really nice talk. Uh, so Alex has done work all over a uh, small tower in Turkey a few years ago. He's doing a, uh, uh, a new building for MIT right now and um, he did the the row, rowing house uh, on the river in Boston. That was a pretty big project, you know, well publicized project several years ago. In April, on April 1, Brian Cantley, he requested that date. Uh, Brian Cantley, our friend from uh, LA, will be here. Uh, he's a professor of theory. He's been to the school many times. He's lectured here before and was a frequent visitor for, for thesis crits and so on. And finally, Everell Colas. Um, of Store and Studio uh, in St. Pete and Miami is going to be here April 22nd. So it's, it's an interesting lecture series. Um, we actually have a couple of more invites pending, but schedules are kind of tight with some people. I don't know if we'll yeah. add anything to it, but you'll know if we do. Yep. No. So um, we're gonna get rolling. Let me ask you to do two things. Everyone uh, mute yourselves, or I guess Audrey can mute everyone from her place and leave your cameras off. So we uh, increase the bandwidth as best we can and have a smooth and have smooth sailing. So once again, I say welcome. Uh, let me introduce Giancarlo Gusti. Um, Giancarlo is one of the first people I met when I moved here and became involved with the school as a faculty member and director. And um, he's a memorable guy when you meet him. You know, he makes a big first impression and um, he's become a good friend. So a little bit about Giancarlo. He was born in Venezuela moved to the U.S. Uh, when he was 17 years old and uh, has been here in the Tampa area ever since. He graduated from the SACD in uh, 2008, just before I came, produced what is said to have been a legendary thesis project. I've seen images and it looks pretty legendary to me. Uh, he worked for a few years with Wilder, then worked for nine years with uh, Alfonso Architects. and. Um, during that time, the projects in, in the office needed, needed fabrication and uh, a fabrication shop was set up that, that eventually, you know, uh, um, Giancarlo would take over and, and, and lead. And that led to him starting his own practice uh, with Modulo. And uh, Modulo is in a downtown Tampa area, just, just a little bit, uh, I guess, east of downtown. And uh, they work out of a huge warehouse that you'll see uh, later on in the lecture. And it's a really unique practice. And I feel like we're really lucky to have a practitioner like this in our midst. Giancarlo has taught at the SAD, SACD in the past, doing a kind of brilliant seminar or workshop called Detail Making. We want to have him back sooner than later to do this again. 
Uh, it had a huge impact on the curriculum and on the students. And um, he has just, as I say, constructed a unique practice that has been honored by the AIA and others with various awards. And I think it's uh, just a very impressive thing here uh, for all the practitioners to take advantage of the skill set that he brings to the um, to the community, to the design community, and the design knowledge, the construction knowledge that he brings to it. And that will make a lot of sense as this plays out in John Carlos' lecture. So, Gigi, let me hand it over to you. And thanks so much for uh, taking time and doing this today. All right. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, obviously, you know, this is an honor. Uh, School of Architecture has been a for me. Uh, never knew how to uh, a profession. Uh, you know, this is definitely not work uh, at all. It's always been, um, you know, I don't want to say a hobby. It's not a hobby, but it's, it's, it's something that you do and, and you don't see the money that you're making and you don't worry about the money that you're making. You just work and come to work as much as you want. And, you know, it's, it's been definitely a, a huge blessing. And, uh, you know, nowadays it's been just a continuation of, of everything I learned from school. And, and um, you know, we'd like to have a lifestyle here at the shop or at the studio of, uh, you know, basically we go to class, we go to the classroom and uh, we were the studio and then we sketch, draw and make things that we like, things that we do. Um, I want to talk about a little, a little bit about um, how we how we do things. I prepared this lecture uh, so that the students can benefit from it. So that they can get motivated that uh, an office is not just reflect the ceiling plans and, and bathroom elevations and parking lots and civil engineering structural coordination. So uh, that's why I'm saying that we're really lucky to, to have this sort of uh, practice. Uh, it's unique, okay? We're involved with a lot of architects in town. And uh, I would say that maybe 80% of the clients are architects. And it's a huge collaboration. Uh, all these architects, they, they come to us because they need to develop uh, a lot of the solutions for their buildings, uh, whether they're windows, uh, facades, screen systems, skins, staircases, gates, uh, you know, doorknobs, ceiling details, whatever, anything uh, in relation to architecture. I think it's, it's fabulous to, to be able to gather a team here and uh, design these, these solutions. So uh, I call this, this lecture Thinking, Drawing and Making. I mean, it's a, it's, this name pops up every time, everywhere. Uh, I think this is the foundation of architecture. When you're thinking, drawing and making, I think you need the three of them. Uh, right before you start any project. So um, these images that I'm going to be showing here, I'm going to try to go very quickly through them so that we can split the, the, the lecture into two. I want to show the images of what we do and how we do it. And then I would like to transfer to the phone and do sort of like the video uh, call and, and, and walk through the shop and show you the machines. I think it's a benefit uh, since, you know, when you do a normal lecture, you couldn't bring the shop to the to the lecture. So now you can see the people working and how they work and what they do uh, down and dirty. So um, right now I'm gonna go ahead and, and scroll. This is the team. Uh, we, right now in this page, there's 16 people, but we're actually 18. It's just that the other two didn't fit. <laughs> well, one is too new, so he hasn't started yet. And the other one is me, I'm not there yet. Um, so in this page, you'll have a variety of people. There is two on the administration part. There is a graduate from UF. Uh, there is uh, three or four graduates from USF. There is a graduate from uh, uh, industrial design from SCAT in Savannah. There is an electrical engineer. There's all kinds of different, uh, it's a melting pot. It's a mix of a lot of thinkers, you know, and uh, this is fabulous because this company wouldn't be the company without any of these people here. Um, <clears throat> every day these people come to work anytime, six in the morning to 11 in the night, 12 in the night six in the afternoon, Sunday, Saturday. Nobody tells them what to do. We don't have any specific schedule. People just come and work. Uh, it's a good sign because that shows you that the the work is the project itself and we want to work towards the project and the solution. And uh, it's fascinating to me. I think this, that's been great. Um, in here, you'll see a, a small capture of how we started the work. This is when I say the thinking part. We take a tracing paper, there is tons of this. It's been uh, 10 years of tracing. Uh, we have a ton. So, you know, I'm not going to go into any specific details, but it's just ink 
on tracing very quickly these details transfer into conversations they go into two-dimensional drawings and finally they get built uh, different scales of drawings there's a scale of a staircase here there's a shoe for a guardrail and so so on and so on there's you know phone numbers of people conversations prices whatever there's another one here you know for example how is that thread detail going to be installed uh, a table, is it six people, is it four people, what are the legs going to be looking like? And then very quickly this becomes something that gets built, which is fascinating. Uh, there is tons of uh, tracing everywhere, rolling through the shop. So very important uh, for those who get hooked in the, into the computer world, uh, you have to have this at the beginning. Um, this is sort of the quality of the, and the materiality of what we're doing here. Uh, you know, very quickly these details become uh, door handles and uh, in here you can see glass steel of different gauges and uh, leather for the handle this is actually a door and it's a door that's the door so um, very nice stuff you know uh, very big moves uh, everything is custom made the hinges the people in details uh, the glass we ordered it and then we install it on site uh, again the handles the bell, you can see the leather uh, this is a prototype table. Uh, I think it's really cool. This is actually a rendering. And then uh, you can see sort of the process right here. I don't know that have value. So you can see uh, some of the, uh, you can see some of the materials that, that we handle. And this is 16 gauge steel and it's like paper and just, Quick experimentations. Uh, everything done with a CNC machine laser, actually, and um, and then you can see, uh, you know, for example, Alfonso, Alvaro Alfonso from Alfonso Architects, you know, it's like, hey, why don't we uh, do a chandelier? Uh, this is sort of the situation that happens. We have a ton of chaholi glass. We're going to put it at Hotel Haya in in St. Pete and uh, sorry, in Ybor City, and. Um, I haven't lost anybody, right? Bob, are you here? I don't know if I'm. You're good. You're I'm good. good? Okay, because yep. I don't know if I'm talking to the air or what. But that's <laughs> no, good to you're know. good. You're good. Okay, so here you have some glass. This is about, um, you know, maybe 3,500 pounds of glass uh, hold, being held by a chandelier. And uh, here are some of the drawings that we have done. And it's all done in CAD and some of the uh, 3D work uh, and showing the client how this will work. And then uh, all of a sudden it becomes clearly, uh, you know, a nice detail on a ceiling. We don't care what it is. We don't know if it's a, a ceiling detail or, you know, uh, it can be a gate. It can be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just a piece of design and how it, how it, it gets built is the beauty of it. For us, it's the process of how it gets built. A lot of the stuff that we do here, nobody sees. Uh, this joinery, nobody sees. There's not a single weld here that you can see. Everything is is acting in gravity. How the thing, how the the members got notched, okay? And then you see how that works. Uh, this actually turned out to be about six thousand pounds in weight. Uh, you know, so there is a lot of uh, engineering to be done here. That is delicate. Uh, here you can see uh, another uh, image of an enclosure for an office building in Ibor uh, for Masonite. And uh, again, they wanted to enclose an area where they were having snacks. And so here is the, the, actual, uh, the actual device that we designed. Uh, for the same office, we have a, a conference table to do. Here's the parts of the conference table. Uh, I'm trying to show you how things come together. Uh, the layers of information for this conference table is just a conference table, but in reality, you have different types of wood, different types of uh, steel. Uh, here is uh, an elevation and a plan showing, and a section showing what it will be. And then there is a table. So there's another detail of the table. Uh, they also needed a feature wall and a reception desk. And so here are the drawings with dimensions and everything. Now it becomes a beautiful feature wall and reception desk. So these materials are very simple. They're very humble. Uh, you can do a lot with them. We use a lot of CNC machining in here. We have a CNC brake metal. 
we have a laser cutter and we have a water jet. Uh, so we can do these things. Here is something really unique. Uh, we had commissioned, we have been commissioned to uh, design a garbage enclosure, a garbage dumpster enclosure. And here is some of the images, some of the drawings, and then there is the garbage enclosure, same thing. Very structural, very clean. Uh, now we gotta see if we are going to put the skin on the uh, on the sides. Uh, this is something that you see from the offices. This is some work for Michael Halflands. Michael Halflands is a great client. He actually let us design a lot and he will um, say, go ahead and design the staircase. I want something beautiful. And so that, that's even harder because, you know, that's your former professor. Uh, he's also an architect and he's for his office. So he's gonna be seeing it every day. Here are some of the drawings, uh, keto parts. Here you can see the elements, elevation, sections, some plans, some details. Uh, Here's the geometries, how the things come together or the parts come together, uh, some of the parts. Uh, the concept, I have an intern here working. His name is Evan. You guys probably know who he is. He asked me, how do you come out with a concept like this? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a need. It's, the concept is, is, is a matter of uh, form following function. And in this case, we needed to be able to fit the parts through the door because the staircase is very big and the, the place is already built. So we have to make it in parts. And so then that's what the joinery became the concept of the staircase. Uh, this is actually really nice because the staircase is made out of one single material. Well, actually two quarter inch plate steel and then half inch. And so we were able to suspend the whole staircase from the beam that we had installed for the mezzanine. We also did the mezzanine that you can see there. And the form is being generated by the way it, it gets joined together. Uh, here, the trick was, how do we attach a place together without welding anything? Uh, so we express the fasteners, uh, just like an airplane wing, we'll express the rivets. And so if we go back, you can see on the, on the stringer plate, uh, all the holes to receive the fasteners. All those holes are done with the laser. The same file gets transferred into the quarter inch plate. Uh, they're, actually, they're actually threaded so that, so that they're, they're tapped so that the fastener doesn't require a knot on the other side and nobody scratches their hand as they go up. Um, it's actually quite interesting. The staircase is really beautiful. Uh, you can see how it floats from the ground. Uh, that's Evan over there touching it. <laughs> and then uh, one of my guys here, Van Lopez, is really into matching the grains. You can see the bluing of the steel. This is really hard to do to be able to rotate the pieces and put them in a sheet of steel that comes in a five feet by 10 feet. This guy is able to match all the grains so that, you know, just like wood, we treat the steel just like wood in here. Uh, here's a stair, it floats. All the threads are bent. Uh, there is a joint line on the center of the threads. You can't see it. It took us like five, six mock-ups to get that to the, to the point and uh, came out really nice. Here's another wonderful opportunity of some of the work. Um, this is for the Museum of Arts and Crafts in St. Pete. This is for Alfonso Architects. Uh, another great client, Albert's been a mentor. He's, he's given us nothing but opportunities and he's a fascinating guy. And so Albert and I sat down and designed these tents for the museum. We collaborated. Uh, Tom McDowell was involved in the process too. He, he works for Albert. And uh, the owner is uh, a trusting guy. He, you know, it, this is holding Franklin Wright artwork and, and, and elements from building parts. And so for us, it's very difficult to create a stand that's going to hold art. So we did a lot of work, created models, created 3D models, created mock-ups. And so you can see the, the stands that we have been manufacturing all the parts. And so here you get a beautiful Franklin Wright uh, set of windows in our stands, which is an honor, I mean, this is priceless stuff, you know, um, and so on. And here's some others. Each one of these tiles is $700,000. You could imagine the level of stress holding these things, uh, you know, trying to install them. Uh, and then what you see from the back as well. So celebrating the arts on a way and being able to connect it on a way that it floats. This is actually very heavy tile. And uh, there's a triangle right again. And this is the back of the, the artwork.
So very logical. The wells are not, there's no welding. Everything is concealed. Uh, what you see is was expressed. The ball head has an expression on the cut. So if you see the ball heads on this one, uh, the steel is not just a flat bar. The steel is a cut on a plate. So that then emphasizes the joinery between the round and the, and the, and the square. Um, so then you get another one of those. Uh, now we're introducing the, the didactic material platform. Uh, this came out really nice. You know, I'm, I'm really happy with this work. It's really beautiful. I mean, obviously, Alfonso, they always give us some amazing work. Um, this is a, a crazy staircase that we got involved in doing in Boca Raton in, in, in Florida, South Florida. And you can see the amount of drawing. It's very rigorous. It's, it's, it's a huge structural coordination. This is for a commercial building. It's actually a bank. And this staircase is about maybe 30,000 pounds of weight. Um, and showing you these print screens, I mean, the, the screen prints, because you can see the level of drawings. There's more to that. Uh, you can see the layouts for the glass. Uh, we've been doing a lot of the glass. Uh, the landings, the structural parts for the landings, how everything overlays one another. Very simple drawings. Uh, you can see a sheet with the details that we have created. This is how the set looks. It's a bunch of sheets like that. And then uh, you can see some of the how hard it was to transfer these huge beams through a window without breaking anything. Um, I got to say, I you know, sometimes I feel like we're really lucky. This is one of those times. <laughs> So yeah, all those beams for the stringers went in. And uh, then we got the stair in place. Uh, it's hanging from some posts from a huge beam. And you know, it basically looks like it's floating. Uh, you can see how it works in here. It's a huge overtaking. And then uh, right here, you have another part of it. That's when it was done. That's the process of the detail. Right now, the stone looks like it's coming through the, through the glass. Uh, if you remember in one of the sketches at the beginning, that detail is shown. Uh, I don't want to go back, but yeah. So uh, very unique, a lot of work, a lot of learning in this one. There is, uh, this is the work for Hive Architects. We work with Hive. They're a wonderful couple in, in Sarasota. Uh, Joe Kelly and Wayne Kelly, they have been producing some amazing work. Uh, I really like working with them. We have become very good friends, talk a lot, uh, and then work a lot. And this is just a couple of elements that we have done for their house that they designed. Uh, it's in, um, this one has a staircase, a beautiful staircase and fence and garage door. You can see some of the drawings and the details that we have done for them. Um, is a lot of aluminum, uh, powder coated aluminum, heavy duty stuff. Uh, again, we can't show any welds. Uh, we don't like shoulding weldings. We don't like showing anything that, that looks uh, rough. Here is the drawing and here is the actual finished work. Um, you can see um, some of the, some of the pilot, uh, the, what you see on the second floor is not wood, it's geolamp, it's an aluminum, uh, resin, aluminum and resin element that comes from Japan. It's actually really good. Uh, here you can see a door latch. Uh, you, you, for those of you who are watching this, you can see the, the change on scales. You know, there is a lot of, so we have a staircase, but then we have a door handle, then we have a ceiling grid, or then we have a sculpture base. And so the work is so diverse and every day you come to work is something new. Um, to me, that's just, Amazing. That's the best part of the job. And that everybody who works here feels the same way. And that's why we're here. Uh, there's a door latch. We presented the client several, uh, several um, choices. Uh, we printed or fabricated a couple of them and went over there and, you know, installed this glass door. Um, that door that you see in there is a $2,500 piece of glass. Uh, I broke it, the first one, and then had to buy another one like an idiot. So, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that we like doing, you know, breaking glass, I guess. <laughs> um, staircase, another staircase, very unique. This is for uh, 
pipe, again, the same house. Uh, right in the middle of the drawing, you can see in here, so somebody came to me and said, oh, I want a little table. And so in the middle of one project, we go and draw a table in between the drawings, something completely unrelated to one another. So then you can see these drawings landing in the middle, middle of the place. But again, on this staircase, you see the hook that we drew to lift the, the staircase of the hoist. It's on the last thread. That was a pretty interesting thing. Here's the staircase being fabricated, all Japanese-like puzzle. Uh, the name of the house is Chibusa, which is a Japanese word for peacefulness. And we decided to continue the Japanese uh, mentality and make a, a joinery that was very uh, logical. Uh, this staircase didn't need any welding. Where he's welding it right now, it didn't need those welds. But we were doing it just to satisfy the engineer. The stuff that we do gets engineers, so they want the welding. But I know it didn't need it. Uh, so then it's a huge cantilever comes out, and then it holds that glass and steel threads. As you can see in here. It's, uh, very elegant, very beautiful. Same people commissioned us to do uh, a bed, their beds, uh, three of them. So that was very unique and interesting. So uh, here you work as hard as doing a staircase. Now you have to design a bed. Same drawings, same things, same situation, nothing different, it's just a different function. Now it's a bed. Um, here's the joinery for the leg of the bed. Like anything else, we do a lot of the stuff you don't see, you don't get to see, but it's the process of how to get there. Uh, in this one, you know, we're huge fans of Mitz van der Rohe, and we love how how he used to handle uh, the, the cruciform columns and and details like that. And you know, this is sort of a celebration to that. Here's the the actual armature, and then there is a nice piece of uh, wood. This wood was very hard to get because uh, it's a piece of plywood that is five feet by ten feet. They don't make those too much, too often, so we have to special order that. Um, so we were able to feed the whole wood in a CNC machine and then open the holes for, for you know, the mattress to breathe and, and, and then also for access for the uh, joinery of the, the, the armature of the bed. Uh, some different projects also for Hive. This is for an office that they did. Uh, this table we render, we show the client, they loved it. We render the stools, they loved them too, so we got to fabricate them. Uh, as you can see, the structure is just two legs made out of 11 gauge steel. 11 gauge is very soft, very uh, slender, very weak, but when you start folding it like origami, then it becomes very strong. And then you can see the table here. It's about 13 feet, uh, one single span, but because of the triangulation, it's, uh, it's very strong. You can see how it was made. Uh, everything is concealed. One single innovation. It's really beautiful. Super nice. Uh, another table that we have done for somebody else. Uh, show the renderings. There is cardboard process. Then we do a lot of models as well. We have a huge collection of models. And um, that's the actual model. One more time. And then the actual table. And then the actual table, and then in the place. We've done some chairs. I think we have uh, designed and fabricated about 30, 30 unique chairs. Uh, this is one of them. This is an example. This is just a rendering, obviously. In this case, we were experimenting with webbing, uh, which is an interesting way of putting things together for uh, uh, chairs, actually. Uh, this is a model. There is a webbing, um, aluminum model and then the actual chair, the one in cup holders. Uh, this is a Guy Peterson house in Sarasota, super nice guy. Um, that's the client, she loved him. Uh, another job for Hive Architects in Sarasota, the same thing. Staircase that floats from the wall, and this is how we did it. It had to fit through an elevator, so it came in pieces. This is actually sort. you guys know who sort is. Uh, it doesn't work here anymore, but he's in the picture. I should delete it. OK. All right, so here is the staircase. And um, that's how it looks when it was done. There were some other options for the staircase. Uh, there were some rods that were supposed to be there. This is how we render how it was going to be code compliance. Uh, but the owners didn't uh, go for it. They went for the glass. And so that glass it was. I wasn't a big fan of the glass. But it is what it is. Sometimes you have to do 
try what they want. Uh, door handle or a door knob made out of steel. This uh, was for a bank. We created the doors for them. And this is what it looks like. Uh, that's actually Jesus Lopez. I don't know if you guys know him. There is a table. Render there for uh, Guy Peterson House in Sarasota as well. And then uh, the rendering quickly became a reality. Uh, this one was more analog. Uh, the tools that were made were very uh, Japanese. <laughs> so everything was handmade, uh, basically, except the armature, the steel was uh, cut with a laser. And then here is Danny uh, chiseling away, beautiful table, and then another table, and then some more sketches different types of staircases. This is one of my favorites too. This is actually a mixture of aluminum and stainless steel. Uh, this is during construction. In here, without that wall, the screen wall, if you didn't have it, the stair will fail uh, because it's aluminum plate. And so it, it, it wobbles, it moves sideways a lot. So the screen wall holds it in place, which is quite nice. This is for Michael Halfland's, another staircase. Uh, we made the landing float, which was quite nice all one piece of stringer. And then another Michael Hafner staircase. Uh, this is all perforated metal. It came in, arrived uh, nine o'clock in the morning by 10 o'clock in the morning it was already installed. And this is what it looks like. Cantilevers from the wall. Um, some more of the work in Sarasota, steel, wood. This is white oak and natural steel. Um, this is a bridge and the door and the stair on the back. Uh, this is beautiful work. This is done like 10 years ago, I think. And then some of the sketches that quickly became a rendering and then very quickly became a reality. I'm sorry, I don't have the picture for this one, but that was built, I promise. Um, and then that got built too. Another table for Guy Peterson. Uh, a rendering that quickly became a reality. Uh, that was quite nice. So I think at this point, that's it. That was the end of the slideshow. Uh, try to be as quick as I could so that then I can show you uh, next door if you want. Anybody there? <laughs> still here, still here. Still here. Okay, still here. good. Good, okay. So uh, now I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, I would like any kind of, you know, a lot of these things are question driven, right? Um, or do you want me to go next door and show you uh, a little bit of the shop and then uh, come back and then get some questions from the audience? Uh, I think if anyone has any questions now, they can reach out. I'm sure they'll have some after you tour the shop. Okay. Anyone have anything they want to type in or speak up? If I type in, Bob, how do I get to see my stuff? I mean, do I exit this and then go to the to the meeting or, you know? Uh, you, you can stop sharing screen or you can click the little dialog box um, on the top right. I and guess if I escape. If I escape. Okay, hang on. Okay, so. Now you can see the screen, right? And I think that what I need to do is, okay. So I am here and is there anything else I can do or? Are you there? We're here. Okay, what do you want me to do now? I'm lost. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, Giancarlo. Oh, uh, there's Michael. Yeah. Can you talk about how you got started? Um, like, uh, in terms of, you know, any advice for for students as they graduate, um, you know, to follow a similar path as yours? Yeah. So, well, and Gigi, first of all, let me ask you. You can stop sharing now, so the uh, the viewers can see you. You just yeah. click click the box that has um, the arrow in it. The X. Yeah. Okay, so I did. I stopped sharing, right? Yeah. Okay, and so now, uh, what do I need to do? Uh, anything else, or that's it? So I stopped sharing. Uh, that's it. So now we uh, can talk, right? You still have. Uh, you're still seeing your screen, and we should probably see you now. Okay. I don't know. Let 
top right, there's a box with an arrow and it has it probably has an X on it or something. There's a little bar that's down at the bottom of your screen. It's got a blue button that says stop sharing. If you look at your PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah I did that and I think that cancel that. OK, so this is high conversation, uh, more actions. I'm sorry, I feel so ignorant. Uh, I believe that that was said. I stopped sharing. So and it may be frozen on our view. Uh, you can yeah. try clicking the camera icon on the little toolbar there and see if it will share your camera. Very you may general. need a grant. Oh, uh, okay. Look, that's it, right? So now you should be able to see me, right? We it's should. Come we don't. Uh, if you have Chrome open, see if you can click that little camera icon up in the address bar and see if you can grant the camera access permissions to to share your camera, camera. the camera is on so that's it yeah no no but they still can't see me so i don't understand no and i don't know i think it might be like frozen or something well you could possibly join from your mobile device now and stream your camera from there might be okay. another option let me see Hold on. now i got now you're throwing a snake at me <laughs> so I believe I really apologize guys uh, this is the part that I was fearing I mean we can talk without seeing me right I think it will be okay <laughs> we can, oh, see, we can, see, we you can see you now Oh, you can see me now? Oh. Yep. Okay, so now we, we're, we're good. This is it. But I can see anybody. No, that's not good. I want to see people. No, doesn't matter. Okay, so what are the questions, Michael? All right, Giancarlo, if you could just talk about, you know, how you got started and any advice you have for, uh, for our graduates. You know, um, the advice I have for the graduates is, uh, I mean, first of all, you have to like what you're doing um, and don't ever do anything that you don't enjoy. And I know that sounds very vague and big and, and broad, but it, it does make sense. I mean, you have to find what you really like because that energy that you're going to be using towards the job um, comes from the inside of you and, and it's not something that you are doing because you're getting paid. Uh, because this is not a career, uh, this is not a career that that anybody gets rich, at least not anybody I know. Um, there should not be any compromise on what you do. Uh, you should not attempt to save any money or time or take shortcuts to, to, to do so. Um, the fabrication, the fabrication aspect of what I do is is born because uh, I'm very mechanical with things, and um, I was fortunate enough to to work in a motorcycle shop when I was a kid. So this source of tactile memory with my hands and tools and bolts and nuts is directed towards architecture, whether you like it or not. Um, I encourage students to quickly go to job sites. Uh, for those of you who started working in firms. Uh, one of the things that helped me out was uh, doing CA, Construction Administration. Uh, I remember working with Larry Wilder. He asked me uh, on my first year of work at Wilder Architecture, he asked me, what do you want me to do for you? And I say, you know, uh, uh, Rick Rados had told me, tell him to teach you CA. And so that's what I did. I, I told him, I want to learn how to do CA. And, and believe it or not, that, that was the most learning I ever had in architecture is construction administration because you get to see the screw ups from the owner, the screw ups from the architect, the screw ups from the engineers, everybody screws up. And the, the last time you have to fix the screw ups is during CA, the time is getting built. Um, another thing I encourage you to do is you have to draw a lot. You have to be able to draw 
a lot of drawings because if you don't draw it, somebody else is going to draw it. And it's usually not an architect. It's going to be a contractor on site. And I used to tell my students, you know, if you don't draw something, they'll build it the way you don't want it. And you are not allowed to come and complain at the job site because you didn't draw it. Somebody had to come with it. Somebody had to come up with it. Um, so I believe that those are my advices, you know, draw, find what you like, find what you love, and you will never, you will never feel like you're working, uh, I, I believe, you know. Uh, I worked do I worked doing a lot of big projects with Alvaro Alfonso or Alfonso Architects. Uh, at a point, I worked five years in the design team drawing for the Streamstorm Resort that we did in in Paul County. And I remember in the middle of you know the project was already drawn entirely, and they wanted to save a couple of million dollars, and they shrunk the building by six inches to save whatever many millions. And so the whole building had to be redrawn again. And uh, we were working there until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning every day. Uh, we had to change all the reflective ceiling plans, all the elevation sections. I guess I'm not trying to bore you with be a slave and draw, but if you don't enjoy it, then you have a problem because I didn't have a problem drawing. I didn't care. And so right now, drawing becomes my second nature. It becomes something that I have to do to be able to do what I do, you know. So I hope that answers the question. Maybe it's too long of an answer. Anything else? Anybody else? Hey, Giancarlo, it's Coy. I have a question for you. Yeah. What? Um, I'm so sorry. Who's this? It's Coy. I was Michael Coy. I took oh yeah. Hey, how you doing, class. man? Uh, yeah. Good, how are you? Stud uh, former student of mine. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I think my question for you. You know, you're kind of inspiration for any student that wants to graduate and not work, you know, behind a computer, you know, doing a traditional architecture job, uh, kind of working with your hands and still, you know, making fabrications. But uh, I'm wondering, and I would, I would like to see uh, at some point, do you have any intentions on um, becoming like a licensed architect designing buildings, or do you think you, you'll stay within the realm of fabrication and detailing and uh, that kind of work? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a wonderful question, and I think about it every day. Uh, and I have the answer for that, because I think about it every day. Um, architecture is my passion. That's what I like doing. I enjoy buildings. I enjoy, you know, any kind of building, whether it's an airside or, or a hotel or, you know, a house or a mini house or whatever, anything that anybody can inhabit. Um, the situation is that I haven't had the need to do architecture for a living. So then the money is so good doing what I do that when I do architecture, it's gonna do whatever the hell I want. And that's common because every day I wake up trying to make my team better. Right now we have 18 people. And what's gonna happen is that we have learned so much how to manicure the details and all the building components and installation of components and design of components. What happens is that it's like a, a dishwasher who starts working in a restaurant. The dishwasher learns how to wash the dishes so well, and then he becomes a salad bar, and then he becomes the, the line cook and the, and the french fry guy, and then the server. And then at the end, you know, when he has a restaurant, it's gonna be a kick-ass restaurant. And I think what I'm trying to say is that I am waiting for the moment that my my uh, my fabrication services have become mastered at the shop by my team that I can step aside and then go do what I like, which is architecture. But if I do it, it's going to be what I like. I don't want to be a slave of selling my soul, doing this street mall architecture that, you know, because a lot of people in this chat know that sometimes you get licensed, you go and work for a firm, and it's not uh, what you went to school for. Put that 45 feet. The floor, put that 45 feet. Yeah, 45 feet. And, and so what happens is that you can't... Oh, put it on the fifth floor. You can't do what you like. Oh, sorry, fourth floor. Somebody's got the microphone. I, I will, I'd like to participate in that conversation too. But <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that, yes, I am going to do that. Uh, that's coming next, and it's going to be wonderful because I'm not in a rush to do anything. I just want to do it correctly, and uh, 
this is one step before I do the next step. It happens that, you know, doing this have brought a lot of opportunities in our lives. Uh, the employees here are doing very well and we are doing very well. And um, yeah, the, the answer is yes to you, Corey. Awesome. I look yeah. forward to seeing it. Yeah. Kiji, why don't we go next door? Look at the shop. Yeah, sure. So now we got to connect, right? So let me see if I can do the first. Uh, Aldri's here. She was helping me out. Um, Aldri, you got to help me out. Okay. How do I connect to the phone? When you're in the app, you should be able to see your calendar. Let's see. Let me open the app too. Okay. So that's the app. The calendar is today. And then um dvt available calendar i don't have i don't have a way to do this i guess calendar so it has to be through the app, right? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. How did you get onto it earlier? I don't remember. I really don't. Sorry. Um, let me see. Is there through an email or something like that? Yeah, there should be a join now button in, in the email. That's how I hopped on from the SACD mailing list, but. New chat, I guess. Yeah. I can also text you the link of it. Yeah, text me that. That would be great. Yeah. Because we rehearsed this two or three times today, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. So I sent the link. You should be seeing that soon. <laughs> well, you know, Sasha was telling me to go to the link in the ACCB, and I think that's. Clever, actually. Let me see. Let's so see me here. Okay, so if I log in into the follow the link, right? Cool. And so there is that connecting. Okay, I think we're good. And then, um, okay, so it's, you got to let me in the meeting. Yep, just admitted you. Uh -huh. Good. Oh, that's Dolores. Hey, Dolores. Now I can see the people. Okay, okay so, so we're good, good right? Yes, I think you're in there. Okay, and then, and then I'm going to rotate the camera. So here is a, so you guys can see everything. Giancarlo, you should shut off the other camera first. Oh, yeah, shut off the other camera. And Sorry. to Loris, if you could turn off your camera, thanks. Good. You're good. Okay. So here's what I was talking about with the file, the, you know, all the tracing that happens. It's tons of it, right? And obviously, we talked about that. There is some of the experiments that we have done, a lot of different screens, different screens here. Uh, there is some of the models. Uh, this is the office, by the way, so I'll, I'll go next door in a minute. But here's some of the models that we have done for different people. There is a staircase that we were talking about a minute ago and how things were fabricated. And there is the other staircase that got built, uh, you know, we also do a lot of the chairs. Uh, this is done here in house. We have a person that does upholstery. Some more of the chairs, uh, some more of the models for the chairs that we have fabricated. These are house scale. Uh, some of the tables, more models. Models everywhere. You know, this is for the armature works. More models pinball machine. So I'll go next door and show you a little bit. 
we actually have two warehouses, okay? I'm gonna go through one and show you. Um, this is one of them. And in here we have So here we're doing a screen system for the same house that I showed you earlier. They want more. So this is getting put together. And we're doing a jig for that, as you can see. OK. And then we'll go next door, where is where we have all the machines and everything else. Bob, you can hear okay, right? Yeah, we, we can hear you pretty well, yeah. It's good. Okay, so here's a lot of the material that comes in daily. This is every day. My neighbors hate us. There's a lot of steel coming in. Beautiful steel. And then here is the facility. Okay, so this is our water jet machine. This one cuts anything 12 inches of thickness, uh, anything you name it aluminum, concrete, whatever. And here we have the laser machine. So yeah, here is our CNC bending machine. This one bends. And you can do things like this. Okay. Here's another screen system that we're designing right at the moment. Really cool. More metal. More metal. This one is getting clear coated. A lot of metal. Here is a piece of glass that I broke. 2,500 bucks. Here's Evan. Uh, table bases. Lots of people working. There's Taylor doing handrails. A lot of stuff, right? Some dogs. Tables. Van. Cypress, we're doing some louvers with that. to stop people I want to show you what these guys are doing there yeah doing the same thing right this is Russell Dawson. 
counter song. Here's the water jet running. And the set. Okay, so. I'm just going to just make it far anyway. Anything else I can tell you or you want to know? or? TG, that's a oh, great wow. tour. That's a great tour. Story is very loud, you know. No, it's it's good. We should have got you a GoPro camera. Yeah, that's right. Nancy <laughs> said you can head to your favorite bar now. <laughs> <laughs> You're done for the day. Hey, look, um, are there any more questions from those of you in the audience? Any more questions? You can type them in or unmute yourself. Giancarlo, this is Steve. Great work. It's great to see your shop. Oh, how you doing, Mr. Cook? Good to hear from you, man. Yeah. You know the story, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It it might be a story worth telling. Do you have do you have a question, Steve? No, I don't have a question. Just want to congratulate you on the great work. Well, I gotta say something. So, some of us here in the group know what happened. Um, I didn't get accepted at the School of Architecture when I submitted the first time. I guess my GPA used to be really bad, um, and. Um, but I love the, the profession, so I wanted to study architecture so bad. And I went over there and, uh, you know, I, I went to Steve's Cook office and I said, look, I, I really want to get in. And so I left in the portfolio and I say, you know, I didn't get accepted, but if, if you feel like this is worth it, please let me come back for one semester and try it out. And so a week later, I got a letter of acceptance, and uh, this is why we're here talking, everybody. And I, and, you know, thank you, Steve, for letting me in. You know what I mean? It's, so uh, Steve Cook's to blame for all this. Yeah, it's a Steve <laughs> Cook fault. And no, another thing is uh, Steve Cook's class was truly amazing because uh, Steve Cook is really good at materials and how to put things together and experimenting with concrete and bolts and nuts and. They allow me to bring welded models and crazy things that nobody else liked, but he did. So here we are, you know, it's good. It's been a blessing, right? Well, it, it's a good story, Giancarlo. Um, you know, I think we pride ourselves on kind of taking a risk on some people where we see a lot of potential and other schools might not. Yeah. Uh, because they worry about the GPA or something like that. And, um, um, you know, I mean, there's the, the proof is there. Um, and I call Steve Cook the horse whisperer of architecture. He just gets near projects and they get better because he's near them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen him in the studio working. It's some kind of magic mojo. <laughs> yeah, Steve is, is great. He's great. Um, but no, you got to you gotta bring the students here, Steve, sometime. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, you know, um, um, Giancarlo has good enough has been good enough to host host students on many occasions, and it's it's really incredible. It, it, it's a shop um, that is almost daunting when you first walk into it. There's so much equipment, and there's so much skill and uh, thought at work in that room in any given time, um, from a doorknob to a facade to a stair. And um, um, it's really kind of extraordinary, Giancarlo. You built something amazing. Yeah, I mean, going along the the you know the question, like, well, you know, when are you going to be an architect and that and that? Uh, you know, honestly, we are architects every day. We work with these very talented people, and uh, you know, some of you work in a firm um, with one architect, but I get to work with ten. You know. <laughs> And so that's that's kind of cool because we're doing the same thing. I mean, 
when I was working for Alvaro Alfonso, I'm doing it for Hoffman's and I'm doing it for Joe Kelly and I'm doing it for Guy Pearson and I'm doing it for Robert Ibarra or, you know, uh, all of these people, right? Uh, Traction's been giving us work too. And so I think it's, it's really cool to, to collaborate with everybody in town. I mean, there's no ego or my work is better than yours and, uh, you know, you got to do what I say or I'm not going to do what you say. It's, it's a true collaboration. I mean, and, and that is the answer. I mean, right now there's, there's no need, uh, but the need will happen, uh, you know, and when it happens, it's going to be great too. It's just going to be a second phase. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, you know, um, if there's no more questions, we can close on that point. But I think, I think the business of collaboration is amazing and our discipline is nothing if not collaborative in nature and yeah. uh, firms work with one another. Uh, employees sometimes get lent out to firms to collaborate. I mean, all kinds of things. And Modulo has kind of developed itself as a kind of ground zero for collaboration in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of beautiful. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful way to close the lecture. Um, you know, we are doing work for many, many architects and, um, and, and everybody here in town is talented. Everybody has a different idea. Everybody has different ways of coming together. Um, you know, at a point, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really good to see students uh, coming in and out. I mean, I go to Halfland's Pichette's office, and he's got wonderful people working for him that go to USF. And then I go to Alfonso, and he's got wonderful people going there, uh, working there that are from USF. I'm really proud of USF. USF has become a very good university. Uh, a very good uh, architecture has the architecture college has become amazing in the community. Uh, it's something really powerful. I'm here for anybody who needs it. Uh, I enjoy teaching when it's available. I really like to be, you know, I feel like I'm still a student, and uh, that's the feeling. That's what I want to keep feeling until I'm, you know, super old, I guess. Uh, but I appreciate the invitation. To me, it's an honor. I didn't know it was going to be this big. At a point, I got nervous now, so. Um, you know, I thought it was just like show your work to some students and then I found out that it's a lecture. But yeah, I mean, nothing here changed. You got to see the real life every day and uh, there's no sugar coating on any of it. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day and let me know if you need anything, you know. And Thank I'll you, Jeff. Well, uh, fantastic lecture, yeah. wonderful tour. Take care of yourself. Hello to everyone there. And um Thank you all for tuning in and, and watching the lecture. We have a fun lecture series, and uh, I can't thank you enough, Carlo. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Congratulations, Giancarlo. Great Thanks, work. Mike. Okay.